Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another episode of the show. And uh, I'm pretty excited about this one. This one uh, I kind of alluded to a few episodes ago. And uh, actually during the mulled wine episode I alluded to doing this or being excited about this particular wine. Um, this is one of the handful, like almost literally, handful of wines or red grapes or black grapes, depending on what, what terminology you want to use, that actually produce red juice. Most, you know, 99.9% .9 of, well, probably like 99% of red grapes produce white juice, clear juice. They get their red color from the skins. This wine is not one of those. This is the, uh, uh, so we'll get right into it. This is the Francis Coppola Diamond Collection, uh, magenta label, Alicante Bouchette. Uh, this is the 2008 vintage, and, um, Bought this at World Market for $13.49. It's normally $14.99. There was some discounting going on at the time. Um, I don't think any of it was... Might have been the Explorer program, whatever. They, they, it was discounted by, what, 50 cents? Yeah, 50 cents. That's that. No, $1.50, I'm sorry. So anyway, um, I've never had this varietal before. Um, this is one of those varietals I would like to have... Uh, I've been wanting to try. Um, it's a cross. This is a this is a cross between Petite Bouchette and um, see Tenterre du Cher and Aramon. So um, I'm sorry, Petite Bouchette is a cross of Tenterre du Cher and Aramon, but this is a cross between Petite Bouchette and Grenache. So. Um, this is, uh, again, one of those weird grapes that actually produces red juice. A uh, little history about Alicante. Um, it's, uh, like I said, it was, it was created in France. Uh, it was a very popular grape, especially after the phylloxera um, epidemic. And then um, uh, in California, it became a very widely planted grape during Prohibition because um, the winemakers, one, could make make a lot of wine from it, from third pressings. I mean, they, they'd press it, they'd get a wine. They'd do another pressing, get a wine. they do another pressing, get a wine, because it was the, the, it's just a juicy grape. Um, the grapes also had thick skin, so they would transport these grapes to New York, to the auction houses. Now, uh, during Prohibition, you could have religious wine, but then what it also would do is that they would, um, uh, wineries would either ship the grapes out to parts of the country, uh, and then they would, wherever they, where they ended up, they would actually get crushed. But they wouldn't ferment. Um, so they would, you would get these, you know, big containers of grape juice, and then, you know, conveniently, there would be all the other little fixins that you needed to turn it into wine, um, so you could do your own fermentation. So, um, anyway, so that's uh, one of those grapes that uh, we don't really consider uh, a very popular grape, but it was one of the most popular grapes uh, during Prohibition because it was able to be shipped um, without damage to uh, New York or around the country. All right, so um, <clears throat> first of all, uh, it's really, really deep in color, um, very purpley, um, grapey looking almost. Uh, so let's check it out here. All right, now I, I do believe that part of this, uh, what I'm getting on the nose is a little bit of, I had read a little description from the winery, um, and the word mocha popped out, I'm pretty sure, yep. Uh, but it's not under aromas. I'm getting a little mocha on the bouquet. 
just red fruits, a little bit of mocha. They say toasted oak, maybe. They talk about allspice. I don't get any spices at all on the nose, but that's okay. See how it tastes. at least a medium bodied wine it's got a bit of acid to it it feels a little hot um, we don't really 13 and a half you know, not really um, got a bit of acid uh, moderate tannins um, it is a slightly grapey but not like you know the the American varietals that are that you get that really taste like grape juice um, it's a little bit grapey Maybe a bit of that mocha in it. Um, they talk black cherries, plums, mocha, and earthy spices. I get the spices. I'm gonna say maybe maybe a little bit of the plum, but I'm getting that more of the grapiness, I think, um, and dark fruits, but not specifically black cherries. Not bad. Um, interesting wine. I'm definitely looking forward to drinking the rest of this bottle too. Um, but uh, nothing that really like stands out like you must buy this wine, in my opinion, uh, especially at fifteen dollars. I'm sure that it's priced because Coppola feels it needs to be priced at $15. Um, but as far as a wine that I think the general public would be going after, I think you probably want to reduce the price a little more. I don't know. I don't know how much it costs them to make. You know, that's one of those things when we sit there and reviewers just sit there and go, well, it shouldn't be a $15 bottle of wine. It, it should be you know, $8. Well, okay, well, whoa, whoa. We're, we're cutting the thing in half almost, you know, or... You know, this $10 bottle of wine is drinking like a $30 bottle. Well, you know, I don't know how much it costs to make this bottle of wine, you know, and all the, all, the, all the costs involved. Because remember, the winery didn't charge the distributor uh, 15 bucks. They charged them, maybe they charged them $8 or 7 or $6 a bottle. But then the distributor has to make a profit. And then the store has to make a profit. Because um, the distributor sells it to the store for a certain amount of money. So um, I was thinking about this all today. You know about pricing and reminding ourselves that you know just because something is retails for a certain dollar amount doesn't mean that's how much it costs to manufacture it. And then people get all in a tizzy about, well, you know, this iPhone only costs one hundred and fifty dollars to manufacture, so why is it a six hundred dollar phone? Well, I don't know. Maybe it costs that much to manufacture it and create the thing. Um, anyway, there's my little soapbox there. So. Um, <clears throat> Would I recommend buying it? I would recommend buying it only, not only, but a lot of it because it's something different that if you've never had that and just to say, yes, I've had a, a red wine that's made out of juices, you know, or grapes that make red juice. Um, it's a different flavor profile for sure. Uh, very interesting. Uh, so for all of those aspects, kind of the wine geekiness, I would totally say buy it. Um, it's not an expensive bottle of wine, 15 or 13 and a half, if you can get it at you know, World Market when they have it discounted. Uh, I'm sure you can find this um, elsewhere. So definitely something to try out. Uh, it might grow on me because you know, I've never had it before, so uh, it doesn't blow me away. Rating, as far as a wine in and of itself, how is it made? Is it a good quality wine? Because a lot of times when we, we review, we let our personal preference, do I like the wine or not, like influence the score. It, it's going to happen. But when it's one of those wines, kind of like, I can go either way. I really am trying to be, is it objectively, is it a well-made wine, not just, hey, did it taste, did, did I like the taste of it? Um, I, think it's a, I think it's a decent wine. Uh, I'm going to put it right at 85. Um, like I said, it, quality-wise, I don't think it's anything spectacular. I don't think it's bad. I think it's a, it's a pretty decent wine. Um, and as far as whether I like it or not, 
I think time will tell. I'll have to finish the bottle off and maybe I'll buy another bottle. Maybe not a Coppola bottle, maybe I'll buy another bottle just to try it out because you always have to remember that the first time you have a varietal doesn't mean that it's the end-all, be-all representative of that varietal. You know, I, I, had Pinot, I had some Pinot Noirs a long time ago. I thought Pinot Noirs were junk. And then I started drinking some better Pinot Noirs and I'm like, oh, this is actually a pretty good varietal. So... Don't let just one varietal like, scare you off. I know I've done it in the past. Uh, that's going to do it for today. I'll have a link to Coppola's website. Yay, i got a link to give you. Uh, link to Coppola's website uh, down below. Uh, stop by the website. Leave your comments. Have you had one of these wines? Have you had this particular wine or this particular varietal? What do you think about it? Have you had any of the other varietals like this uh, that have the red juice? And uh, talk, talk about that. Uh, friend me up. Do a donation, because donation is love, and uh, I'll see everyone next time.